clear thing is the Fed interest rates, right? So we know that the U.S. is closer to normalizing their monetary policy versus Europe and the Japanese, which are kind of years behind the Fed and really lowering rates and looking to prop up credit markets. So I think you've seen it this year and last where a lot of companies are coming out and issuing in, in different currencies, euros. For example, I think Apple, first time last year in November, issued bonds in euros. Um, this year you had Chile, you had some Brazilian corporates come out. Um, so I think you'll see that trend continuing. The only word of caution there is the idea for the company should be to diversify their funding base rather than take a speculative view on, on currency markets. Because we've seen in the financial crisis of the past, companies in Mexico like Vitro um, basically defaulted purely because they took a speculative position on the Mexican peso. So my only word of caution would be to do it to diversify your funding base and not to become a speculative investor and leave that for asset managers. You know, I have a diff different take on this. I think oil prices have affected equity markets much more than fixed income. Um, if you look at new issues that have come to market this year, you've seen a shift in composition of who's taken up these issues. For example, European investors, which typically bought you know, 20 to 30% of new issues, are now closer to 40 to 50. And that 20 percentage gain has come at the expense of the US, where American investors or US-based investors have gone from about 25% allocation in new issues to eight, um, whereas Asia stayed flat. So I think that's, again, related directly to monetary policy, where there's a lot of money available in Europe. Yields are extremely low. Um, so there's a lot of demand has shifted. I don't think it's, per se, um, been a cutback altogether. And that also goes back to the quality of issuers in the Middle East where you know, there's a lot of government or government-sponsored quasi-sovereign entities issuing bonds. So you have really strong credits issuing where I don't think the drop in oil price will directly affect their balance sheet where investors will pull back. I think it's just going to be a rotation in terms of who's buying these things. I think it's, it's huge because one of the things you see is you, know, you have huge big events the IMF event in Washington, you have Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where the Fed has their events, you know, Davos, Switzerland. Um, and you never have these big name events in the Middle East, while you have a lot of foreign investors or asset managers coming here to raise capital. Um, so I think it's great to see these events because not only it's, it's a reciprocal process in the sense you're also bringing expertise back to the region and developing local expertise and kind of getting conversations going. Um, which is great not only for Middle Eastern investors and corporates, but even global. They get a better idea of how these economies work, how, the, how banks are doing. Um, so I think it's, it's great in that sense where it's really pushing the, the forward conversation and developing the fin financial field in, in a way in the Middle East. So I'm glad that's happening. My panel was on commodity prices, interest rates, and I think one of the things was that you know, people are fixated with when is the Fed going to raise interest rates? Is it June? Is it July? Is it August? Is it September? Um, and I don't think the actual start date matters as much as how fast they go and what's the terminal rate that they're going to take it to. Um, and so I believe fixed income and even U.S. Treasuries still have an important play in people's portfolios um, and not to get spooked kind of by the market that's saying, oh, Fed's going to raise interest rates. Um, the other thing was to look, again, deeper down at the quality of data where, you know, many people ask us that, you know, unemployment rates at 5.5% in the U.S., shouldn't the Fed be doing more? Um, and my typical answer to them is, you know, look deeper than that. Um, the Fed released some recent survey data where they looked at college graduates and they said 49% of college graduates in the U.S. work jobs that don't require a college degree. Um, so there's a huge degree of underemployment in the economy which again goes back to interest rates and, and the delay and how long it'll take. Um, those would be the, the, the key points that I would say.